Carla, I guess that we can start. Yes, sure. Uh, okay, my name is Nikola Bodnar. I am a Apache committer, and today uh, we are going to present the DLAP. Uh, so we are going to take to talk about DLAP, which is an essential tool set for analytics as well as hybrid cloud orchestrator. And I would like to quickly walk through the problems that we are trying to resolve by building this platform, as well as to focus on its main features. To start this presentation, I would like to quickly walk you through our typical blueprint for building a big data platform in cloud and also uh, to focus on role of DLAP here. So, as you can see here, we've got multiple layers on this big data blueprint. It typically starts with data injection. So, we are trying to ingest uh, the data from multiple data, data sources, which can be relational databases, some social feeds, etc. The next layer uh, is, of course, the injection. So, uh, basically, to speed up development as much as possible and to be able to quickly verify requirements that data engineers are trying to solve while building the data platform, to create some repeat prototypes and visualizations, and to be able to validate them with client. Uh, we were thinking that we need to create something with it and we have came up with the exploratory environment, which called DLAP. And as we can see here, it's represented by data and ML exploratory rectangle. So once we have some models built, once our data scientists or data engineers or data quality engineers have validated the data, they can start doing some repeat prototypes in parallel to infrastructure actually being built for all production pipelines. And this is where we use DLAP. Within the big data practice, we built a bunch of data science and data projects. And we uh, typically talk to the guys who've been the part of this and try to understand what problems they've been facing while building all those platforms. And typically they say that the cloud infrastructure is different. They would really like to have similar sort of experience while building those data products. The second thing is always the security, essentially when working with sensitive types of data. So data scientists, data engineers, due to lack of computational resources, they're trying to bring the data from the cloud to their local machines, which is actually a very bad pattern to follow. Data scientists also bound to local machines because the costs of cluster is huge. The infrastructure, as I mentioned before, is not yet built. The lack of self-service also brings tons of operational requests to the IT or to the DevOps organization to actually enable some policies, open some ports to enable connectivity. And this is actually a huge amount of time needed to spend by the IT teams in order, in order for development to be actually enabled. And also we were thinking that adding something around cost allocation and monetary of security control. After all, those feedbacks provided by our team, we thought that we need to build something for them and it should fill all of presented here conditions. And we have basically engaged our best engineers, DevOps, to build a platform which we called DLAP. 
So, what is DLAP? DLAP is a hybrid cloud which can be connected to the to three main clouds: the AWS, GCP, and Azure at the same time. It has easy to use and providing similar experience in, uh, across all the clouds web interface that all the users of DLAP can use for basically seamless experience of doing the data analysis, creating the data models, doing any type of explore to data analysis. Sorry. Yeah, correct. And to summarize before I proceed to DLAP architecture, so it's basically the self-service that enables data scientists to spin up resources without any support from IT, since it has very easy to use web interface. It contains the latest version, versions of open source tools, which are always updated. The framework also allow you to install libraries on your notebooks, which is pretty essential for data scientists. That is not only for notebooks, but for clusters as well. DLAP is under Apache 2.0 license. That means you may use it in both commercial and non-commercial use. And you can collaborate in this environment as well. So uh, about the architecture. Uh, in this one slide, the whole architecture of the lab is presented. On this slide, it's based on AWS version, the Amazon Cloud. So the first node is self-service node. It contains the Mongo database, user interface service, and may contain local endpoint. As we mentioned before, Endpoint could be located in any of three clouds, AWS, GCP, or Azure. So this is the general sham of DLAP, where the endpoints could be located on different cloud than the self-service node. But the general architecture is the similar for GCP and Azure. Endpoint contains provisioning service. All resources management in the cloud is done by Docker containers, which are also run on Endpoint. For security reasons, access to all computational resources is done by Edge node, which plays role of reverse proxy. All computational resources are located in private network. Endpoint and Edge node in public network. For access to user interface, we are using Keyclock, which could be connected to third-party identity providers like Active Directory or OpenLDAP. So, in two words, DLAP is a sandbox. You can actually create your environment, you can break it, you can reprovision it from scratch without breaking anyone else's environment. And this is huge benefit. It also has a multiple building templates, as we call them. Those are Jupyter, RStudio, Zeppelin, as well, as well as combination of Jupyter and TensorFlow, RStudio and TensorFlow. We also pre-install the most important uh, data and science libraries like Keras, Pandas, Storage, and many, many others. We also added the ability to add pluggable computational power like standalone Spark cluster and EMR or Dataproc. As we mentioned before, DLAP support lifecycle management. That means you can actually create your environment, you can break it, you can reprovision it, you can stop, start, or terminate resources. We've also embedded the builder library management functionality in DLAP as well as bucket browser and audit page. Apart from that, it's really important to mention that a working with a team is all about collaboration. So we did enable this functionality by means of that installing tool called ungit. Besides from that, we have a billing functionality, 
where you can set some quotas, assign them for projects, for specific users, and also we have the powerful administration interface. So this is pretty much everything about introduction of DLAP. And of course, as open source product under Apache license, we already made three releases and fourth version of the lab was released just a few days ago. And uh, now I want to ask my colleague, Vira Vitanska, to share the presentation of the actual environment of the lab. So Vira, can you proceed? Thank you, Koda. Hello, everyone. Just a moment. Do you see my screen? Yes. Do you hear me? Colleagues, do you see my screen? Yes. Just a moment. Yes. Now it's okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, as Koya has mentioned, I'm Vera and I am a part of commuter and it is a pleasure to be here. So let's get down to the demo. Our journey starts from the login page. After entering a valid username and password, user is located on the list of resources page. It's a self-service web console used to create and manage exploratory environments. Teams can spin up analytical environments with just a single click of a mouse. What can you see here? What cloud resources have been provisioned? The second, how much money you spend with specific resources. On top of that, you can as well filter your list by instance shapes, status and many others. Now let me show you how to create analytical tools via DLAB. After clicking the create new button, you see a dialog where you can define parameters for your analytical environments. Project and endpoint. In what project and point you are going to create analytical tool. Template. Here you define what software packages you want to have in your disposal. Zeppelin, Deep Learning, Jupyter, RStudio, RStudio and Jupyter, and Jupyter with TensorFlow, Jupyter Lab. On top of that, superset on GCP. Name, to identify the source on DLAB Web UI. Instance size, we support all shapes, uh, we support all shapes from the cloud region where DLAB has been installed. So the list you see now is configurable. On top of that, we support GPU optimized instance shapes, which data scientists widely use for such uses cases as image recognition, working with video streams and others. Custom tag, I feel for your tag. And finally, Spark configurations. This is needed when we want a notebook to be created with custom Spark configuration. If notebook, is if notebook is created, its status is running. After that, you are able to manage it via the action menu. Let's go to this action. Stop notebook. A notebook can be stopped at any time you need. Stopping notebook will still allow you to work with it later. Terminate. Terminate notebook. Once terminated, you can no longer start to the uh, you can no longer start the notebook which has been terminated. 
Next, add compute. Most of the time, data scientists start with cloud notebooks deployed on a single virtual machine. They create the code base on top of relatively small data sets just to evaluate whether code works or not. Once they see that it is working well, they might need to execute on large volumes of production data. Thus, they would require to add more computational power to their jobs. GitLab helps to add more computational resources with a single click of the mouse. Once create cluster automatically shows up in corresponding analytic web UI. You can simply switch through the remote kernels of your notebooks to enable parallel distributed job execution. We don't limit data scientists to stick to a single programming language. They can switch between various programming languages via the kernel menu of every notebook. Scala, Python, R. Okay, let's go to Scheduler. In order to optimize cloud expansion and use cloud resources only when needed, we have created Scheduler functionality, which can effectively manage your analytical tool and cluster start stop lifecycle. Either on time by Spartan or based on inactivity. In addition, the users can specify a recurring for notebook start and notebook stop. Scheduler can be also apply on clusters. Next, manage libraries. On the screen, data scientists is installing needed libraries, dependencies, and frameworks on the analytical notebook, notebooks and clusters. Now you can see a field was for selecting an active resource to install libraries. A field for selecting group of packages, aptitude, aptium, Python, R, Java, others. A field for search available packages with autocomplete feature, for example, And the last field, it is an optional field for library version. On top of that, the user is able to downgrade or upgrade a version of the installed library if it's necessary. Once multiple libraries and additional packages have been installed on the notebook, it might be worth creating an image with all this software pre-installed such that the next time data scientists would like to create a new analytical tool. He can leverage an, an existing image, thus saving time for preparation of analytical tool. GLAB enables collaboration capabilities across data scientists and data science teams. Collaboration is made via a built-in tool called ONGIT, enable collaboration at code base level. On top of that, GLAB enables collaboration on data level, creating a collaboration page which is accessible for read and write for all users who have access to GLAB. User just need to fill in the repository credentials. Use, user can clone repository to a notebook. It is still opening to a notebook, push, pull, merge, and execute many other Git operation just working with the web UI on Git. In addition, data scientists are able to access cloud buckets via GLAB Web UI. 
On the screen, user is supposed to upload file, create a folder, delete a folder, a file, on top of that, download a folder, copy paste to a folder, to a file. Let's I show you quickly overview of main functionality of the administration page. First of all, manage roles. We can create DLABS groups and assign specific roles and permission to them. Once created, those DLAB groups can be linked with actual ID groups and users. On such users logging into DLAB permissions corresponding to the DLAB groups are automatically, to the use, are automatically granted to the user or groups of users, allowing them to leverage specific functionalities included but not limited. Working with specific instance shapes, working with specific software packages and templates, the ability to see billing data, the ability to create clusters, the ability to have access to cloud buckets via DLAB Web UI. Let's go to the manage project management. <clears throat> On the manage project page, the administrator is supposed to manage a project. Add or remove group. Add and point. Environment management. The environment management page allows the administrator to see the list of all user environments and to stop or terminate all of them. DLAB supports connection to any of cloud endpoint. Amazon Web Service, GCP, Microsoft Azure. One of the DLAB key features is ability to manage and limit quotas for working with cloud infrastructure. This way we provide an easy and effective way for DLAB administrator to have control our cloud resources usage and money spent associated with those resources. We have the ability to manage quota per project, monthly or total period and per DLAB installation in general. Uh, when it comes to working with cloud and creating clusters, one of the most essential questions asked is, what is the cost of infrastructure? On DLAB's billing report page, not only answers this question, but also provides valuable details and insights for other analytics and optimization strategy. You can see total money spent for whole infrastructure, see money, uh, see money spent grouped by and filter, specific user, resource type, instance size, status, project, date, and export report into CSV. And finally, the audit page. The audit feature tracks key activities in DLAB that allows user to look back at changes that have been made in DLAB. User can see when, who, and what changes have been made and filter by. Date, user, product, resource type, and resource. So that's uh, all I have for you today. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, if you have uh, any questions, you are free to ask us.
Yes, thank you, Vera. So we are waiting for questions. I think you can send your question in the chat. Please do not hesitate to answer. We are still here. Okay, I can't see no more questions. So thank you for your attention. Uh, I hope that you liked our tool. Uh, we have a big pleasure to introduce it. So see you on the next ApacheCon. Have a nice time and bye. Thank you. Have a nice time. Bye.